Okay. And I think they can actually hear me out there, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so I'm Dean Triple. I'm CEO of Agoric. And um, Agoric is a layer one chain powered by the build staking and governance token uh, using the Cosmos technology stack where we deliver JavaScript smart contracts, uh, a platform for JavaScript smart contracts. And what's important about the platform and JavaScript smart contracts is it turns out to line up with what developers need to deliver chain abstraction solutions. So I'll get into that in a little bit. First, you know, we have succeeded. It's important to note, and we talked about that a little bit in, in, in a couple of the panels earlier, that we have succeeded in creating a field of vast numbers of app chains, roll-up chains, modular chains, et cetera. We've created this network of connected chains that is, you know, that is what we all set out to do as one of the first steps towards broad use of blockchain for mainstream applications and mainstream use cases. And that's resulted in, you know, $2.6 trillion, uh, you know, yesterday, maybe it's different today, of liquidity and value in these chains across the various crypto ecosystems, right? That's a huge success and a huge uh, thing that we have accomplished, but that has challenges, right? You know, that creates a crypto chaos where we've taken that liquidity and it's now fragmented across multiple chains. It's fragmented across this network of hundreds and soon thousands of chains where users coming in see no clear entry point. Where do I start? And I've got a thousand places to start, then that's like I have zero places to start. I'm going back to TradFi, right? And as we've all talked about several times today, it gives you this very poor user experience, right? What do users want? What they want is this vision that is now coming under the label of chain abstraction, which is kind of the start of it, right? Which is they want seamless access to underlying assets. They want access to liquidity across arbitrary chains without having to think about which chain it's on. They want a uniform entry point, right? You know, it's not that there's one entry point, but they all kind of work the same. In the same way, when I go to an app on Web2, I can kind of know what to expect as I'm interacting with this app. And they want seamless cross-chain UX, right? They don't care about which chain an asset is on. I mean, you know, my analogy is if you're using DoorDash, right? You've got an app, you push a button, you want a hamburger delivered to your door. You don't care about the microservices underneath. You don't care whether DoorDash runs on Google or Amazon or what have you. What you care about is your hamburger is delivered hot. Right? And this is the same thing we want in Web3. We want our tokens delivered hot into our wallet based on whatever we asked for, and we don't care if that took unstaking something over there, transfer it, swap it, what have you. We want the new thing we're interested in delivered now, right? Whether it's an NFT, and we don't care if it's Solana or, or on, on Stargaze, or it's you know, the newest token that just got launched, this is the thing that I want to participate in. This yield fund I want to participate in, I don't care what the infra is. Okay. so. Let's take a simple user scenario. Pick a random name for a DGen. Let's say Zucky, right? Um, uh, you know, if you knew a Zucky, if there was a Zucky, he would want to take some some uh, staked Tia that he got into at the beginning of, of the launch of the Celestia platform, and now Stride is offering an airdrop with liquid staked Tia. So I want to take that. He wants to take that unbond it, move it across, and do whatever he needs to do in order to participate in this stride airdrop, right? He wants to increase his yield. And he's heard that this is a good thing. Okay, if you know Azaki, he probably helped them set this all up. But, uh, but, uh, th but that's the desire of lots of the people where, you know, where literally millions, or actually tens of millions, uh, of dollars flowed into people now needing this solution, right? And how does he do that right now, right? Well, oops, I keep hitting the wrong button. Start by undelegating uh, your, your Celestia token, right, and signing something in a wallet, and then wait for 21 days, right? And then so 21 days later, he's got to set an alarm, wake up, get it, you know, come up, figure out what the heck he was in the middle of, and then go, oh, yes, let me now transfer it to the stride uh, um, uh, uh, chain, whatever that is, right? And that requires another signature. And then on the stride chain, liquid stake it, and that requires another signature, right? So this is now 21 days and some change and multiple signing applications just to do the one thing that he wanted, right? We can do better than that, right? That, that, that current, you can't quite see it, right? Today's UX is, shall we say, cumbersome. I think someone said SUX, right? Today's UX sucks. 
OK, so orchestration is the solution to that. Or rather, you know, chain abstraction is that users want some simple thing independent of the underlying chain. Turns out implementing that is hard, right? It's hard to, do, to coordinate the activities of asynchronous services all trying to co cooperate together to deliver a simple user experience. And that's where Agoric orchestration comes in. It is how we program this stuff. Right? So it's the capabilities to be able to program that. You can find out more about that. But let me give you a sample of code. Now, how many people here are developers? Raise your hands if you are, have a developer background. OK. So we have a small number of developers in here. But this code is simple enough and straightforward enough to express what it is that that poor Zucky needs to do. Right? So this is a software that is in JavaScript. Right? 15 million people would understand it already, running on chain, running on the Agoric chain, but coordinating the activities of multiple other chains. So from this smart contract, reach out to Celestia, find out how much do I have delegated, and then tell it, OK, could you undelegate that? And the first miracle of the platform that you see here is this await, right? This action of reach out to Celestia and ask a question, then the block ends, and the blockchain goes on and does other things. And sometime later, the answer comes back over IBC um, you know, using, using interchain queries, ICQ, a fundamental service in, 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 in Cosmos, or using GMP if we're going over to ETH or whatever integrations we have. right? Um, and then this, uh, this smart contract operation will wait, and sometime later when the answer comes back, it will proceed ahead. So it will then go and undelegate. 21 days later, when that finishes, that await will wait, and it will proceed ahead to the next line, which is reach out to stride, get an object, this get chain operation, that gives me access to the services available on the stride blockchain. And what I want to do is make a brand new account. This uses ICA accounts in Cosmos. It uses a different thing for Ethereum. But fundamentally, make me a new account that this smart contract is going to manage on behalf of the user. And this is the second miracle of the platform, right? where what I get back in that ICA stride is a JavaScript object like you know, the window, like a document that you see in the browser, what have you. It's a JavaScript object, which is the only thing on the planet that can control that brand new account that I just made. And so that means this smart contract is managing those assets in that account on behalf of the user from the smart contract that they're operating on Agora. Right? OK, so after, the, after I waited for that to happen, now I come back. I'm going to reach out to Celestia, to my Celestia account, or rather the user's Celestia account, Zucky Celestia account, get the balance in TIA that, is, that has now been unstaked. And then say, OK, transfer that over to Stride. Right? So, so 21 days later, do the transfer to Stride. Once that completes, which involves two or three chains, might be a bridge, whatever your counterparties are. Once it's arrived there, then the last thing you can see down at the bottom is tell Stride to liquid stake it. And at that point, the user 21 days ago, Zucky 21 days ago, said, I want to do this action. Make it so. And eventually, however long it takes in these timed actions, it will complete. OK. So key things, as I mentioned, and these are unique to the Agoric platform, is this ability to do long-lived processes with multi-block actions. Fundamentally, anything multi-chain, anything cross-chain is going to be multi-block. And being able to program it in, this, in the way that people are used to building orchestration in Web 2, right? in the way that people are used to building these things that coordinate multiple applications in Salesforce or Bloomberg terminals or what all these systems that control trillions of dollars, that's what we provide in Web3, where you can do this async await. You can react to events coming in. You can send a message, react to a response. You can say, hey, Oracle, you know, let me run this function when the price crosses 50. Race those two, whether, you know, add a timer. If in 24 hours it hasn't crossed 50, then I want to do some other thing. You can react to the world changing. You can react to the world signaling you with things. And then finally, you can extend it, right? Timers are an example of an extension where I want to do something, and then 24 hours later, you know, unbond that position and move it over here, right? Or I can add to that, where you saw the, hey, give me the object that give me the services that are available on Stride. Stride is accessible over IBC. That's great. But if I say, give me the objects for the things that are available on ETH, I might get an object that goes over Axelar GMP, but from a programming point of view, I can just use very simple JavaScript uh, 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 calls in order to invoke these things that underneath the covers was extended to be able to use GMP or use Union Bridge or Hyperlane or Polymer or whatever the infra that I want to be able to use, I can program them uniformly. All right, let me quickly move on here. So 
that lets you reduce fragmentation, right? You can build these workflows into an application, into a Web3 application or extending existing applications with the ability to coordinate these bits and pieces of your application functionality across different chains. You can do user, you get user retention from an application point of view, right? There are applications where they're not web, new Web3 applications, they're existing applications like a liquid staking token where people use it in order to get a new token that then the next thing they do is get thrown over to the Osmosis application to lock it up into a pool. I mean, Osmosis is awesome, but I don't want to give my users away to them. I want to be able to incorporate the service of, that Os Osmosis provides over the interchain into my application so I can keep the user there and keep adding value with that user. That ability to retain users is critical for the next generation of applications. I can now access liquidity, right? We talked about this fragmented liquidity. What chains should now start to care about is not total value locked and frozen, it's total value accessible, right? How much liquidity is accessible asynchronously from, from other chains so new chains, new applications, new services can launch and immediately tap into this rich ecosystem that we were all building. And then finally, I want that simple user experience of not click, 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 click for all these signatures that I need, but one action with a, lo a long-term workflow that, the, that, that, that does something interesting and useful on behalf of the users. So last slide, this is uh, in the process of rolling out. The orchestration core is, is going into testnet now. The APIs will be launching uh, uh, shortly thereafter. Um, we are inviting people to apply to the early access program that includes, you know, white glove hand, you know, strong custom support for your application, uh, financial incentives, and, uh, and, and additional specific support that we'll be adding um, uh, as the new APIs roll out. So prioritization of APIs to support your particular use cases. So um, we're looking for a few good key applications that need access to uh, these kinds of services. And I look forward to talking to you out there when the next keynote is done and we all get lunch. Thank you much for your, for your time. I see one question here. Since he has a mustache, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, that demo you gave with the accounts that you're creating on different chains. Yes. Like, what controls those accounts? What keys? So the, the question was, the demo I gave where I've got a smart contract creating accounts on different chains, what controls those accounts? So there are things, you know, different folks are implementing different parts of orchestration or different kinds of orchestration at different layers. In the Agoric uh, orchestration API, we use on, in the connected interchain over IBC, we use interchain accounts. So there's not a key. Those other chains go, here's a new address where I'm going to believe actions not signed by a private key, but essentially signed by that light client of that other chain. So the Agora chain is the one that opened that account. You know, Celestia believes that when the Agora chain's consensus says, yes, the user wants to transfer it to Stride, then it'll go, I guess the user wants to transfer it to Stride. Let me trigger that action. And then there are similar mechanisms that you can use on Ethereum where in order to get a new address on Ethereum, you have to deploy a small contract. But again, from a programming point of view, now you've got a new account that is controlled by this remote, this remote smart contract and we're able to exercise authority over that account on those other chains. And so it depends on the mechanism. But. You need something like IBC or cross-chain messenger. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... So we've done a lot of work on all of us here, but Agoric as well, to build the infra to do interoperability, right? That's the thing that created that sea of connected chains. The problem is you have to move your assets manually from one chain to the next instead of being able to write programs that span across it and manage all of that. And so this orchestration stuff is about spanning across it and managing all of that, automating that motion and those activities. Thank you all for your time.